Before having sex with your partner, have you ever stopped to think, hmm, what can my partner be carrying? What if my partner is carrying excess baggages of emotions from their past relationships? What if my partner's ex is chasing after them? What if they're unresolved situations? Or even worse, what if my partner is carrying HIV? Here's a thought. Out of the millions of people that surround you, can you tell who around you have HIV? Did you know that HIV is a worldwide disease that in 2010, there were 33.3 million people living with HIV? If you were to compare, that is almost the whole population of Canada. How about the fact that worldwide there is an estimated 2.6 million people who become newly infected with the virus every year, and an estimated 1.8 million deaths due to AIDS in 2010. That is like a total of 6,200 Boeing 787 planes crashing. So what is HIV? HIV is Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Let's break it down. H is for human, I is for immuno, means resistance to disease, deficiency means lacking or failure, V is for virus. Therefore, this is a human failure to resist disease. HIV is a virus that attacks the immune system, resulting in chronic progressive illnesses that leave people vulnerable to infections and cancers. It then can be harder for the body to fight off infections, which then leads to AIDS. So, where does AIDS come in? HIV takes about 10 years to progress into AIDS. AIDS is Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Acquired means re received or obtained. Immuno means resistance to disease. Deficiency is lacking or failure. Syndrome means a disease reflecting a particular set of symptoms. Therefore, AIDS is an obtained failure to resist diseases. Since AIDS is led from HIV, it compromises the immune system and people with HIV are more prone to infections. These are diseases that people with normal immune systems can also get, but with HIV, they occur at a much higher rate. It also takes longer for a person with HIV to recover than it takes for someone with a healthy immune system. Some infections can spread to a number of different organs, which is known as disseminated or systemic disease. Many of the opportunistic infections that occur at this stage can be fatal. HIV has severe neurological effects such as dementia and brain tumors, diseases that result in difficulty walking and talking, weakness in limbs, and seizures. People may not know how HIV is transmitted. Do you know? There are many myths out there. One is that HIV is transmitted by sitting on public toilet seats. But actually, HIV can be transmitted through different forms of contact. Here are the ways HIV are transmitted. It can be through unprotected sexual intercourse, through the exchange of semen, vaginal discharge, and blood, sharing of needles, using unsterilized needles for tattooing, piercing, or acupuncture, from the mother to the baby through pregnancy, delivery, and breastfeeding, and body fluid exposure in the healthcare setting. So how do you know if you have HIV? Well, that's the tricky part. HIV manifests in flu-like symptoms such as fever, headache, fatigue, and swelling in the lymph nodes. Sometimes, people with HIV may not have symptoms at all and may not know that they are infected. That's why it's important to get tested. At a Canadian standpoint, did you know that at the end of 2005, an estimated 58,000 people were living with HIV and AIDS? That is a 16% increase from the estimate from 2002. Likewise, in 2005, approximately 27% of people with HIV were unaware of their infection. Who is at risk of HIV in Canada? Currently in Canada, there are three groups that are most at risk, leading with men who have sex with men, people who inject drugs using unsterile needles, and heterosexual partners. However, the number of heterosexual men and women infected through unsafe sex is on the rise. Unfortunately, it gets worse. In Canada, there is between 2,300 to 4,300 new HIV infections that occur each year, and many of these are not immediately reported. In Canada, did you know in 2009, there are about 355 deaths? That almost accounts for one person dying every day. But remember, people don't die from HIV. It is when the immune system is compromised with AIDS that kills them. Although there isn't a cure, you can be an advocate and help minimize the rate of transmission and incidents. So 
So what can you do to minimize HIV? Here is a nifty ABC reminder for HIV prevention. A. Abstinence B. Be faithful to one partner C. Condomize So do your part and use caution when handling used sharps, use sterile needles, ask your partner about their HIV status, get tested, and speak up. To minimize the spread of disease and new infections of HIV, the Canadian government is doing their part by creating a law. The Supreme Court of Canada ruled the obligation to disclose HIV-positive status before engaging in behaviours that put another person at significant risk of bodily harm. So be responsible and get tested. HIV not only affects an individual physically, but it also compromises the social, mental, psychological and emotional aspects of one's life. So help stop the spread of HIV and AIDS through treatment and prevention by decreasing the stigma and discrimination and increase the quality of life and health status for every individual, including you. We can conquer HIV together. For more information, here are some resources. The Public Health Agency of Canada, Canadian HIV AIDS Information Centre, and Canadian AIDS Society. Click the links for more information. This was brought to you by the Langara Nursing Students. Thanks for watching!